Welcome, Liz Drum. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, evaluate uh, using our double angle formulas. So um, what we have here is we have a right triangle, and we're given the sides of the right triangle is 3, 4, and 5. And what we want to do is evaluate for the double angle for sine, cosine, and tangent. So the basic thing we need to do is know what the double angle formulas are if we're going to evaluate them. And then what we do is we basically just um, plug in the values um, based on that formula. So if you're doing this problem, um, you know, for your uh, for like homework or on, uh, for homework, you know, make sure that you have those double angle formulas for you. If it's in a test or something, make sure that you study those formulas so therefore you kind of know them off the top of your head before you can go ahead and move on. Because I can't really, it always changes if you're provided the formulas or not. I just make sure you do enough of these problems so therefore you remember them and you can easily uh, bring them up when needed. I just threw my pen. Okay. So therefore, um, let's go and look at the double angle formula for sine of 2 theta. That's just equal to, equal to sine of theta times cosine of theta. So again, if we look at theta, we need to make sure we go back to knowing our you know, trigon trigonometry here. And when looking at you know, a right triangle, we have our, our right angle and we have our angle theta that we chose. Remember that the hypotenuse is always directly across from, uh, directly across from your right angle. Then the, the side length, so therefore this is our hypotenuse, and these are our two sides, or legs of the two, tri actually I should call them legs, not sides. Those are the two legs of our triangle. However, um, for sine, cosine, tangent, we, we, we have a way to further identify them either as an opposite leg or an adjacent leg. So just always remember that the side length that's between the 90 degree angle and theta is called our adjacent leg. And the side, and the op side that's opposite of theta is what we call our opposite side. So remember, um, when evaluating for this, sine of theta, remember sine represents opposite over hypotenuse of a right triangle. So in this case, we have 2 sine of theta. Um, therefore, it's going to be 2 times sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be times 3 over 5 times cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Then, basically what we do is we multiply. I can rewrite the 2 as 2 over 1. So that's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6, times 4, which is 24. And then 1 times 5 times 5 is 25. And then, done. Now, for cosine, we have, multiple, uh, uh, we have multiple different formulas that we could use. I wrote them down because I'm teaching during the summer, and I don't like remember off the top of my head until, unless I start teaching it like actually in a class. So cosine of 2 theta, we have cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. We have 2 cosine squared minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So we could use all, either one, all of those, or we, uh, either we can use those interchangeably, what I'm trying to say. Um, but for, in this example, I'm going to use uh, cosine squared minus sine squared. So I'll do cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Then all I'm simply going to do now is, now remember, cosine squared of theta basically means I'm going to evaluate for, the theta, for cosine of theta, and then that's going to be squared. So cosine is, again, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to equal 4 over 5 squared minus sine is going to be 3 over 5 squared. Okay. When adding those up, I get 16 over 25 minus 9 over 25. Then subtract that. 16 minus 9 is going to be 7 over 25. OK, now go ahead and looking at tangent. Um, the last one we're going to look at for tangent is um, going to be a different formula. And that formula is going to be 2 tangent of theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared of theta. And tangent is usually the one that gets everybody um, trouble because that's going to be your fraction. So we'll kind of take a little extra precaution with this one. I'll try to make sure I show all my steps. So I have 2 tangent of theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared of theta. OK. So again, um, remember cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse. Ta uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Tangent, remember, is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to go and plug in those values here. So in doing that, I now have 2 times 3 over 4 divided by 1 minus 3 over 4 squared. Okay, 
Well, 2 times 3 over 4 is going to give me 6 over 4. Um, 6, over, yeah, let's just, 6 over 4 can reduce to 3 halves. Yeah, let's just write it over there. Let me just write it so you can see it. I'm not, I told you I wasn't going to make any or short steps. So that's 6 over 4. And that becomes 9 over 16. So 1 minus 9 over 16. And you might be thinking to yourself, OK, so now what do we do? Well, the main important thing here is we're going to want to subtract these. So the best way to subtract them is to rewrite 1 with a denominator of 16. I can also re reduce 6 over 4 as 3 halves. So in doing that, I obtain 3 halves divided by 16 over 16 minus 9 over 16. OK, so basically what I did is I just rewrote 1 as 16 over 16. I did that, so now I can subtract 16 over 16 minus 9 over 16, which is just going to give me 7 over 16. So therefore, I have 3 halves over 7 over 16. Now, what do you do when you have a fraction divided by another fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal of your denominator. So therefore, I'll multiply by 16 over 7 on the top and the bottom. Any, any fraction multiplied reciprocal is going to divide to 1. Then I can simply just reduce this. Well, 16, uh, 16 divided by 2 is going to leave me with 8. <sighs> Let's use a different marker here. Let's use red. And then 8 times 3 is going to leave me with 24, and then I just have 7 on the bottom. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate for the double angle of sine, cosine, and tangent when given a right triangle. Thanks. Hello.